97% of my clientele expressing some sort of concern over hair loss. Thank you so much for being here with me today to talk about thinning hair and hair loss solutions. These are topics that unfortunately occur more often during conversations at the salon than not. Experiencing hair loss, regaining hair loss, just going through it. So yeah, 97% of people today I would say, based on my knowledge and experience, are having these same issues. It's becoming extremely common. Oh, the puffy thing! Can't lose the puffy thing! Oh, Jesus. We're also testing out my little mini microphone today, so let me know what you think. Alright, anywho, let's get right into it. Harvard did a study and the New York Times also expressed that a record number of people have been experiencing post-COVID hair loss. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trichologist, I'm a licensed professional hairstylist and I do have currently 207 clients that I service and 3% of my clients tell me they have too much hair. 3%. The other 97% have at some point or another, for some reason or another, mentioned hair loss to me or I have mentioned it to them um, regarding their hair. Today's video is a little bit different than anything I've ever done before. It's going to be a knowledge dump, a sharing of knowledge, a factual discussion. I don't know what you want to call it. What should I call this? This was a requested video from Melinda Nunez. Hey girl, um, shout out to you. Thank you for this amazing idea for a video. Let's talk what thinning hair actually means or is, why the hair is thinning. So a normal amount of hair loss daily is up to 125 hairs. That's 125 hairs per day in your brush, on the floor, in the car, came off with your clothes at the end of the day, in the bed, on the pillow, wherever, in the shower, etc., on the bathroom floor, you name it. 125 hairs per day shed is a normal amount of hair to lose without you ever noticing because the same amount of hair is growing in as is shedding. There's no noticeable hair loss. Thinning hair or hair loss happens when more of the hair than normal, more than 10% of the hair at a time is entering into the resting phase. Let's just quickly go through the phases of hair. Antigen, catagen, telogen, exogen. There's four phases that a hair enters into in its lifespan. Antigen being the growth phase, which usually lasts three to five years. That's the longest phase. That means the hair's happy, on your head, living, growing in your scalp. Great. Catagen is the transition phase. It's the second phase the hair enters into, and it only lasts about 10 days. It's a really quick phase, but it's when the hair becomes unattached from the follicle. It's still implanted in the scalp, but it's unattached now, not becoming nourished from the blood supply and losing its grip, its roots in the scalp. Telogen, the resting phase, uh, lasts about three months. That's now the hair is starting to loosen away from the follicle and drift out of the scalp. Exogen is the fourth phase. It's actually exiting the scalp. So that's when you see it either on the shower wall, uh, in the drain, in your brush, on the pillowcase, on the bathroom floor, on your shoulder. It can be everywhere. Okay, reasons for hair loss include but are not limited to illness, medication, diet, weight loss, age, hormones, and genetics. Illness such as COVID or cancer or some sort of thyroid issue, all of which can affect your hair. 
medication, any type of blood thinner, blood pressure medication, and or chemotherapy or immunosuppressant drug could affect your hair. Any kind of diet change where you're not getting enough protein or absorbing the nutrients from the food you're eating, a rapid or sudden weight loss for a number of reasons could contribute to hair loss, kind of setting that hair into the intelligent effluvium phase really fast, really quickly, out of nowhere, you could do that. Age, as we age, hair doesn't get thicker. Hormones, as we age, they also change, and they usually don't change in our favor regarding hair. It's usually more hair loss depending on genetics and your body composition, your hormone levels. It can be in the front, it can be all of the top, it can be sort of in the back, it can be the horseshoe. It depends on where you're at personally, but any of those are common areas to experience hair loss in. And finally, genetics. Genetics play a huge part in your hair and the lifespan of your hair and what it's capable of, how good it can be, how bad it could get. Even with great genetics, your personal habits could ruin good genetic hair. And at the same time, outside factors could ruin genetically good hair as well. Like I said, um, illness, medication, diet, a sudden or rapid weight loss could cause a noticeable hair loss or trigger a large shed. Okay, so now that we've talked about thinning hair, let's talk about hair loss solutions. So while you cannot shake your hair out of telogen effluvium or exogen, the resting phase or the shedding phase, and jumpstart it into the anagen or growth phase, um, doesn't mean that there aren't things that you can do in the meantime if you are experiencing hair loss that could help you temporarily get through it. So if you're experiencing thinning hair or hair loss, things you can focus on in the meantime are scalp health, proper diet and supplements, and a healthy hair care routine. So my clients ask me about biotin frequently and I can't tell you that biotin grows hair. Biotin is not a hair growth pill. That's not what biotin is or does. Biotin aids in the absorption and breakdown of fat, carbohydrates, and protein in foods that your body can then turn into the raw materials it builds hair out of. Yes, that's possible. But I will also tell you that protein intake and diet is a large concern uh, of mine personally and I noticed that once I really started paying attention to my protein intake my body composition just became better overall my skin became better my hair and nails became stronger and uh, I even believe my hair is shinier um, because of the amount of protein I eat it may not be a miracle but I do think there is something to protein being the building block for which your body can make keratin out of, and keratin is what your hair and nails and skin use. So again, I'm not going to say that biotin will help you grow hair where there was no possibility of growing hair, However, if your hair is growing and you are eating a healthy diet, biotin can aid in the production of new hair growth. Yes. And without adequate protein intake or absorption, the hair will 100% suffer. 
So if you aren't getting enough protein for whatever the reason, whether you are eating it and your body is not absorbing it, or you are not eating it in the first place, that would give your body reason to then not be able to produce the hair you're looking for or the growth at the speed you're looking for. So a healthy protein goal for anyone experiencing any kind of hair loss is one gram of protein per one pound of body weight, meaning that a 150 pound person should aim to eat around 150 grams of protein per day to maintain proper hair growth. So to be clear, biotin does not prevent hair loss or grow hair. If you're looking for something to grow hair, stimulate hair growth, or produce hair growth where there is no hair growth, I would look into more topical things such as hair growth serum, but vitamins and food will not grow you hair if the hair follicles are not alive and capable of producing hair. And I treat protein more of like a building block, it's a raw material, it's what your body builds your hair and nails out of and if you don't have enough of those building blocks you cannot expect to build anything great, big, strong, right? You understand that analogy? If you want strong hair, the foundation of what the hair is built out of needs to be good quality, good quality raw materials, good quality intake of protein, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and then the outcome is so much stronger and healthier and shinier and more vibrant and can grow longer without breaking, etc, etc, etc. Right? You get that. Yeah. Okay, I don't know why I'm so nervous for this video, but I guess it's because I kind of think I'm not qualified to do this video, but in certain ways I am. And um, yeah, if you don't want to hear what I have to say, you can clearly um, choose another video to watch. I am here to just share my knowledge with you, my personal experience with my clientele. If there's any other questions you have or any other data I can share with you, please give me the opportunity in the comments below to help you and know that you are not alone. If you'd like to hear my personal story of hair loss, thinning hair, and things I did to get to where I am today, check that video out anyway. Um, give me another sip. Start from here. <laughs> nope, cut. Should I mix my hair? Is it cute? Is it cute? Oh no, I don't think it looks so cute on camera. Don't kill me. Okay, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> However, statistically speaking, I don't like being on camera. Woo! I like having hair to do. This is, uh, this is not my comfort zone, guys, but this was a highly requested video. Highly requested by my one follower. <laughs> Let me go to the YouTube. Ow! Testing, testing. <laughs> There's a dog barking. <laughs> okay, should we try this again? Excuse me. What happened? Oh no, is it broke? Stand by.